Hi, I'm Nanda Barker-Hook from EHOP, and I'm here at Town Hall to interview Claire Wright, our chair of our Board of Selectmen, about Special Town Meeting, which is coming up next Monday, February 11th, at 7 p.m. in the Middle School Auditorium. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, special Town Meeting is coming up uh, next week. It's unusual to be having a town meeting in February. Normally, you know, annual town meeting is happening in May. So can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be voting on at Special Town Meeting? Well, as you may have heard, we're going to be voting on what is called a TIF. And a TIF is um, an acronym for Tax Increment Financing. There will also be a few routine approval items that have been thrown in, but the primary reason for calling the Special Town Meeting is for the TIF. The Tax Increment Financing is an agreement uh, it has been requested by Lycan Bioscience, LLC, uh, as, a, um, as a tool to help them come in to a long vacant property on 97 South Street and bring what the Board of Selectmen feels is a lot of economic benefits to the town. They are a manufacturer of what they call immunotherapy treatments. They use uh, cell and gene therapy to develop treatments that are considered less invasive for cancer and other illnesses. They provide their products both directly to hospitals and to global ph pharmaceutical companies. Uh, if I can just read off their own statement that they serve top innovators in medical development who are clustered around the 495 corridor and top life science firms around the country. So this is an opportunity for us to develop a community municipal partnership that will bring good jobs, student internships, economic vitality, and increased tax revenue um, to a somewhat dormant area. And so why are we doing this in February? What's the impetus right now, this month, that we have to do this? And the reason we can't do this in May is because LICAN has identified the 97 South Street property. Being able to get the TIF agreement with the town is central in their decision-making process. Um, for them, it's a highly desirable location. We've got a good workforce, wonderful road connectivity. Everybody knows Massachusetts in general has always been considered a hub for medical, medical research, medical providers. Um, we're talking about 63,000 square feet of vacant space that has been dormant for years. And because the TIF is key to their decision making, time is of the essence. To ask them to wait until May, uh, we feel this is an advantage for the town. We could lose this opportunity if we ask them to delay. So that's why we have called the special town meeting. And um, TIF has that, uh, <laughs> LICAN actually has contributed to the cost of the special town meeting because that's always a factor in an extra town meeting and it also underscores the degree of their interest in Hopkinton. Mm. Um, so until about a month ago, I had never heard of a TIF. Um, now I understand it stands for Tax Increment Finance. Uh, can you tell us about TIFs? What, what is a TIF? The TIF is a, an economic tool. It's provided to, state, uh, to municipalities under mass state law and it's a tool to enable municipal community and business partnerships to bring in new economic activity in areas that they might be blighted or abandoned in the case of some urban centers, that wouldn't be our case in Hopkinton, but also just underutilized properties. And as I had previously mentioned, the 97 South Street property uh, has been vacant for quite a long time. I think someone said seven years. I'm not sure if that's, that's correct or not. So it's not really bringing much to Hopkinton. Would we get a new tenant there without the TIF? I don't know. It's possible. It hasn't happened yet. And as you know, there are a lot of vacant properties on South Street. So this opportunity to actually bring this, this vitality um, is an important one. These are sites that are, for whatever reason, hard to attract private investment to. Um, it, they can be used to um, help existing businesses or new entries into the market, and in this case, this is a new business coming to Hopkinton. 
What the TIFF does is it will freeze your existing real estate tax base. And the town will continue to get those taxes. We've been getting them all along from the landlord at 97 South Street. We'll continue to get those. But the company comes in and makes investments and increases the value of the property. They could be investments in simply rehabbing the building, in new construction, in new equipment. All that increases the valuation. And so they receive through the TIF a limited tax exemption on the new value added, whatever goes above. So either way, the town continues to receive the base value. They simply get tax relief, which will help them in their balance sheet to reinvest and make these improvements. Um, it's over a limited time, and it's for an agreed upon percentage. The state law allows a maximum TIF, a maximum tax relief of up to 100% and over a maximum of 20 years. The TIF that we've negotiated with Lycan is not nearly that aggressive. Uh, I can go into the schedule a little, a little later, but it's only a 10-year TIF. It starts out with a 90% in the first couple of years, and it drops down after that so that I believe in the last three years it's only 20% tax relief. So it's, so it's less, less aggressive than that. I think the, one of the things to keep in mind, again, is that base rate, which is paid to Hopkinton on the real estate, does not change. We continue to get that. It's the new investment, and it's for a limited period of time. Were that company to go away, we would still be getting that base rate. Two other things about the base rate. If the town does a revaluation on the properties, and they're doing it all the time, that's why people keep saying, how come my taxes keep going up and up and up? Well, it's the value of your property. All, Hopkins desirable, all the properties are going up, so your base rate goes up. So if the town does that, and they often do, that Lycan 97 South Street property's base rate will go up as well, like everybody else's, and they will be paying the higher rate on the base rate. They won't be exempted from that. They will only be exempted for the increased value that they add. So if the increased base rate is increased because of the town, town-wide, they come up with everybody else. If the increase is increased because of their project, mm -hmm. what they're doing, that they are exempted from. And I guess one other thing to consider is that sometimes, you know, unused properties, it's never good to have unused properties. They start to deteriorate. Stuff happens. You can actually lose value when a property is, is unoccupied. So if that property continues to be unoccupied, yeah, we'll still get the base rate, but we might even lose some income if it's unoccupied over time and, and things start to deteriorate. So you know, that, that's a little aside, but even the base rate doesn't, al doesn't always stay where it is unless there is some activity. Um, just, just to kind of tell you quickly the details on that TIF, as I said, it is only for 10 years, not for the maximum 20. The schedule calls for, in the first three years, they will get a 90% tax exemption. So they will pay 10% on the added investment, but 90 will be, will be um, tax relief. In the next two years, that's year four through five, that exemption drops to 80. So we get 20% now, and they have 80 that they can reinvest. After five years, it drops to 50. So we're going 50-50 with them. And then for the remaining three years, that would be years eight, nine, and 10, the exemption drops to 20. So we're getting 80% and they're only relieved by 20. And after that, presuming that they make a success and they are very optimistic, we of course, the, the TIF goes away. They're down to 0% and we get, we get the full, the full um, you know, tax, in, tax going forward. Mm -hmm. So again, a tax increment is going to be the difference between the starting assessed value of the property in its unimproved state and the assessed value going forward 
as improvements are made. There's no decrease in the real estate tax base value that comes to the town. It's only on improvements made. So if the town votes yes um, on this issue at special town meeting and Lycan comes to Hopkinton, what will the impact be on residents? Um, you know, I'm thinking as a resident in Hopkinton, how is it going to impact me? I was thinking about this in advance, you know, the idea of how it will impact me. And I guess I should probably broaden that to how will it impact Hopkinton in general? Um, what do we stand to gain with this? I want to emphasize again, and this is why we are meeting here today, and why it is important for people to come to this town meeting, even though it's in February and it's cold. Um, this decision is in the hands of the voters. Under Mass Law, the TIF requires approval by the town governing body. That's you guys, all of us. It's town meeting. So we cannot go forward with this agreement unless it's approved by town meeting voters. Um, first of all, in terms of how it affects me or how it benefits the town, emphasizing again, the existing tax revenue stays the same. It will bring in new tax revenue. It's not going to be at the 100%, but it will be new tax revenue that we are not getting now. So we're ahead on that. And if it's a successful partnership, this promises expansion across the board and bringing in a new, solid, desirable business partner to the town. So going forward in the future, short term, there's benefit tax-wise, long term, even, even greater benefit. Jobs. Lycan is in an emerging industry, um, medical technology, innovation. These, these are growing desirable fields. They're good, clean jobs in a good, clean, safe environment. Lycan has, and I will say promise to the town, I'll talk more about it later, how they will actually, they must keep this promise. They have promised to bring in at least 125 new good jobs to Hopkinton with a priority given to Hopkinton residents. These jobs are across the board of educational, uh, edu educational spectrum, high school graduates as well. We're talking jobs with an average salary of $98,000 a year plus benefits. These are outstandingly good jobs. And as I mentioned, this is a clean, it's considered manufacturing, but this is a clean mm -hmm. manufacturing environment. They will be targeting Hopkinton residents, Hopkinton graduates, and um, of course, this has to be with applicable fair labor laws, but they are committed to giving a priority to Hopkinton. They've also committed to partnering in our community with our schools and our community in general. They've committed to partnering with the high school to develop an internship program. They will work with the school superintendent to develop um, medical technology internships for our high school students. They've also committed to being a functioning member of our community with an active community volunteer program where their employees working with the town manager will participate in town volunteer activities across the board where their expertise can be useful and, and vice versa. Um, and they also are making a commitment that to the greatest extent possible, considering, you know, again, fair labor laws and all, that they will attempt to, to the greatest extent possible, use local contractors, local vendors, and local suppliers, both in their construction phase of the project and in their operation phase. So it's not hard to see the stimulus effect that this type of a partnership can bring to the town. When they're doing their initial construction, there are obviously building fees, permit fees, that will flow into the town as well. Uh, I would mention one other thing. Um, people are always concerned about water use. Even though they pay for it, we are always concerned about our water. There was a previous uh, occupant there that used a lot of water. Um, 
you know, whether that's good or bad, but it, it raises some concerns. And uh, in this case, in the case of Lycan, they have a commitment on their water use to uh, no more than 10,000 cubic feet in a six month period. So they are not a big water user. So also, I've, I've mentioned specific commitments to the town that are in that contract, the jobs, the internships. But big picture things, our town finance office took a real close look at this TIF. Um, and, and I will give some thanks later because there was a, a real collaborated effort on t at Town Hall to bring in good information so that we could share with you. And our finance team also looked at big picture things when it comes to employment. And uh, clearly, spending by this company is going to lead to added support and service jobs across the economy. I didn't realize this, but there are studies that show that technology jobs, when a company brings in good tech jobs, it's anticipated that they can generate up to six times more in the community than what is actually spent by that one individual community. So I can might put in this, but you have a six times ripple effect with these kind of jobs coming in a community. It benefits both inside Hopkinton and outside. And another interesting point, and I think I mentioned that Lycan talks about working within the, the 495 belt. There's economic industry, um, research that shows that these particular med tech uh, businesses, there tends to be a cluster effect. When one starts up and does well, they bring their friends. You know, it attracts other like industries, so that there's this potential to even become sort of a hub for this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. They identify good suppliers, good services, and again, we all know there's a lot of space up on South Street, unfortunately. So, I mean, we're not making pro they're not making promises. We're not making promises. But just looking at the at the trends in that field, there's a real potential that bringing in one such successful industry to South Street could begin to develop an entire cluster mm -hmm. of light companies mm -hmm. with light jobs. So, you know, we're looking at boosting our local economy, adding near-term tax revenue, and substantial added tax revenue in the long term, mm -hmm. assuming the TIF is successful and they continue to stay and grow and expand beyond that 10-year term of the TIF. And I will speak with this more uh, later, but this idea is very consistent with the town's vision to strengthen our economic base. And our economic base, the strength of our economic base, this is really huge to people. It's hard to quantify, but people need to understand this. The, ec the strength of the economic base affects our credit rating. And our credit rating affects what we have to pay for borrowing money. Every year, we go to town meeting and we vote all the stuff. DPW, Marathon Schools, Senior Center, New Library, on and on and on. That all costs money. It's borrowing. For a number of years, we have maintained a AAA credit rating. and. That's just not like a nice gold star thing. It's real money. Mm -hmm. If you have a strong economic base, it affects the price that lenders charge, i.e. how much interest we have to pay long term on all this borrowing. And oh, that is hundreds of thousands of dollars. You don't see it. It's kind of buried in all the figures there, but if you, as with anything, if you're a low risk client, you get a good rate because I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to pay me back. Mm -hmm. If you're a high risk client, I'm gonna charge you a lot more because I'm not so sure I'm gonna get my money back. And so whenever we can improve and strengthen our economic tax base, it has a huge payoff in future projects and what that costs the taxpayer. I'm wondering, you know, business plans don't always go exactly according to plan. Um, and so what happens if Lycan 
things don't work out the way you know they're intending, um, what will what would the impact be on the town if they're not able to fulfill their terms of the TIF? That is an absolutely fair question, and you know, best laid plans of mice and men, caveat umptor, you know, know what you're getting, and and we've had TIFs in the past that haven't worked out. Um, there's been a learning experience in that too. In general, the TIFs. It's not so much what you lose, it's more, it's more a lost opportunity. It's more what might have been, an opportunity to gain that we no longer have. Uh, as I mentioned, starting out, the base real estate value on that property remains, so we continue to get that income either way. If Lycan is not a successful venture, all those good things I just mentioned to you, the 125 plus good paying jobs, the internships, the community economic stimulus, the volunteerism, the building fees, obviously we don't get that. It's not money out of our pockets, but it's an opportunity to gain that we no longer, that we no longer have. So, you know, it, and that, and of course the increased tax revenue over time that we would look to have that we won't have. Um, sometimes in these economic agreements you'll have what they call a clawback clause to, to actually get back. The way the TIF agreement has been negotiated, we don't really have to worry about clawing back. It's not like there's a gift that's been given and now we need to get it back. Um, you know, when you train your dog, Come boy, good boy, here's your biscuit. You don't give the dog the biscuit first and then if he misbehaves, you hope you can get it back. That doesn't usually work, <laughs> work that way. Um, it's been arranged such that they have to perform first. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, the performance is measured and then the biscuit gets given. Then they give, then they get the tax relief. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing to claw back because they don't get the relief until that previous year, they have proven that they've met the requirements. Mm -hmm. So going forward, it only benefits them if they've done what they promised to do. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the protection for the town. Mm -hmm. You don't get the biscuit until you're a good dog. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> um, also, the way these TIFs are written, um, this, there are multiple protections for towns that are part of, this, of the law. There are some very, very strict reporting requirements. In addition to just having to give the performance before you get the tax relief, there are annual reporting standards to both the state and the town on performance. So it's not just you know somebody's guess as to whether they did what, they have to actually show this in a report with numbers and facts and figures. Um, in the state, it's called the EACC. This is the Economic Assistance Coordinating Council. Mm -hmm. They submit their reports on job creation and on capital investment mm -hmm. in the community. Within the town, our board of assessors, they review the jobs, they review the new hires, they review the use of vendors. And in any of these cases, if there is a lack of performance, there's a certain amount of time when they can cure this, they can make right. Mm -hmm. But if they don't, then they can be decertified. They will lose their TIF. So there are some very, very strict oversights to make sure that the community gets what it bargained for. Mm -hmm. And if not, again, if they were to lose the TIF, we're still getting that base tax revenue, but they won't get those rewards unless they, they meet their, prom their promises to the mm -hmm. town. Um, just to kind of go over, because I mentioned earlier, we've had some TIFs that didn't, didn't do. Towns don't give out TIFs like candy. Uh, it's, it's a company that demonstrates strong potential for the town and for whom these tax incentives play a key role in their balance sheets in making the whole investment work mm -hmm. for them. Um, Perkin Elmer, Parkwood, 
down on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. That has been a very successful TIF. They have fulfilled their requirements. They've brought great things to the community. They've continued to improve that site. And that's a great example mm -hmm. of, a, of a real good TIF partnership with the town. Um, Lonza, which actually occupied the same site, they were a TIF that didn't work as well for us. They eventually um, moved their operations to Europe so it wasn't really any fault of Hopkinton mm -hmm. as much as they um, moved their operations. But at the same time, in the time, that they, in the time that they were here, with their relationship with the town, they contributed $2.5 million towards our completing the Hopkinton-Milford sewer line. Mm -hmm. So they left a very good piece of a very strong benefit for our town, mm -hmm. even if the TIF did not run its full course. Mm -hmm. We've had um, Stryker was here, uh, although that was not a successful TIF. They brought in about seven, they contributed about 700 million. And um, so all of these TIFs, whether they turned out well or not, they have brought in new investment mm -hmm. and new resources for the town. In general, they're I won't even say in general, outright, there has not been an adverse impact on the tax base. Mm -hmm. It's more what might have been. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of concern in town about the impact of residential growth on um, our schools, our town services, our budget, and ultimately our taxes. And one line of thought is that if we can increase our commercial tax base, that will reduce the tax burden on residents. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how much commercial development would we actually need to see to feel a relief in our personal taxes? And what impact, if, if any, will Lycan have on our taxes? Okay, that's a fair question. That's the eternal question in town. Uh, how am I gonna lower my taxes? So I, I wanna give you kind of a two-part answer. I wanna give you the bad news first and then the, and then the good news. Um, Suburban communities across the board, the, the split's about an 80-20 split between 80% of the burden is borne by residences, 20 by, by commercial. Hopkinton has an even bigger imbalance. We're 84-16. So we've got a huge, huge burden that's borne by the, by the residential taxpayers. Um, in the case of Lycan, communities occur around all want these kinds of jobs. Clean, good, safe jobs. They are desirable. If Topkinton doesn't give them, I can guarantee you somebody else is more than willing to offer, to offer that. Um, so it's a good thing to diversify our tax base. So for one thing, we're not so you know, heavy in with one company that then if we lose that, we lose you know, everything. So there's a lot of just general advantages to these types of jobs and this type of, a, as I mentioned, all the, the ripple effect economy. However, our town accountant and our tax assessor pushed some numbers, did some real hard looking in anticipation of this kind of question. The math shows that even a substantial, a big jump in our commercial is not going to show a real appreciable decrease because the imbalance is so big. Mm -hmm. With an 84-16, even a dramatic growth will will show it'll show an, a, a, a decrease but it's not a silver bullet mm -hmm. by any means and that's just not like Anne. that's you know everybody mm -hmm. uh, they looked at a, a sort of a potential situation said what if we could increase our commercial tax base by 25 percent more now, that's really ambitious mm -hmm unlikely. And on top of that, they said, let's say 25% more, and those businesses don't even use any town services. Generally, businesses use fewer town services, but they do use some. But let's just perfect world, and they don't use any town services. So they said, he, Mr. Nee showed us that it would lower our tax rate by 3.9%. Now what that means is right now our tax rate per thousand is 17.7, $17.17 seven, $17 per thousand. That would translate into your tax rate going down to $16.48. Not a, it's a drop, but it's not a huge drop. So in understandable numbers, 
an average house, $600,000. Right now, today, your tax bill is, that tax bill is about $10,300. It would drop it to $9,900. That's $400. That's real money, hmm. absolutely real money. But it's noticeable, but it's not really dramatic. Yeah. In the big picture, it's not dramatic. And that's assuming a really ambitious 25%. Mm. That's, we're trying, mm. but the likelihood of that. So you can see, because the burden is so heavily weighted on the residential, it's a long road to go to make a commercial, forgetting Lycan, just com commercial in general, really, really change it. Mm -hmm. However, and there's a big however here. Um, oh, before I get to the however, these are Mr. Nice's words. In conclusion, there are a number of very good reasons to encourage the expansion of clean, safe, commercial, and industrial development, but it is unlikely that even the most rapid growth in our small commercial and industrial base would support a large tax reduction for our dominant residential tax base. So, now the good news. We see the economic stimulus across the board, which I've already, already spoken to. That benefits multiple times over. We see the jobs. We see there will be lower, when we increase commerce, those businesses do use fewer services. They, they use some. We know they don't use schools. A lot of road, library, senior services, youth and family services, parks and rec, all these town services are big, big drivers of our budget. And you know, it, it's a it's, um, very natural thing to look at how much money is coming in, but we don't always look at what the cost side is. Mm -hmm. And if you're not driving up the cost side, that is a big advantage because at the end of the day, we, f we raise our taxes based on what it's going to cost to run the town, how many services we need to provide. And if there's a big chunk of the town that's not demanding those services, that's not raising those budgets mm -hmm. the way increased residential does raise those budgets. So that's, that's an advantage. Um, and again, and I cannot emphasize enough the importance of the credit rating, the importance of that strong economic tax base that gives us that strong credit rating that directly affects by thousands of dollars every year the borrowing that we have to do, which we all have to pay for. We, when we want this stuff, mm -hmm. we have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, to, to say that Lycan or even a big increase in businesses is you're going to see tax relief tomorrow. Probably not, but let's not lose sight of the bigger picture and the many, many advantages to strengthening our local economy. In terms of um, increasing commercial development in town and using Lycan as an example, um, and saying that they wouldn't be using town services really as in comparison to residents. Yeah, right. um, but what, what about the thinking of, you know, there's going to be 125 new jobs, mm -hmm. and so we would imagine that there could be potentially new families coming into Perfect. town with kids that are going to go into the schools. So um, there would be some impact on the schools. Would you, wouldn't you say? Well, their agreement is to give priority to Hopkinton people. So ideally, we might be talking about people who are already here. Mm. Um, you could, I suppose, I don't know how the count works, whether it was someone that was hired from somewhere else and then they moved to Hopkinton, so they become a Hopkinton person. Um, but you know, considering the amount of increase we're having from residents across the board, uh, People who people are going to be moving into Hopkinton either way. Mm -hmm. It's not like Lycan coming or not coming is going to keep anybody out of Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. uh, what brings people into Hopkinton is the availability of the housing. Mm 
mm -hmm. whoever they work for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's really hard to see a direct connect with that other than on, I think, really positive side of ideally bringing some good jobs for Hopkinton High School grads, Hopkinton residents. So thank you so much for doing this interview. We really appreciate it. It's so much helpful information. Um, are there any final comments you want to, um, you know, share about Special Town Meeting? Well, I, I would because this has been a long interview and people maybe don't have time to watch the whole thing. Uh, I would just like to, it is an important vote. And I'd like to just very quickly summarize the key points for people to take to town meeting. We're looking for tax increment financing for lichen biosciences. This is going to be a limited tax exemption only on the added value, not the base, which we will continue to receive, but the added value. It will allow occupation and vitality in a long vacant site at 97 South Street. In exchange, what we will get, we will get new tax revenue. We will get the use of an underutilized site. We will get good paying jobs coming to Hopkinton with a priority for Hopkinton residents to be hired. We will get student internships, a collaboration with our high school. We will get a strong employee volunteer program, collaboration with all our town departments to use the resources of Lycan employees to benefit our town. We will get businesses to local vendors, suppliers, and contractors, both in the construction process as well as moving forward in the operation phase. And we will, of course, get building and permit fees as income to the town as they move forward with their project. On the big picture, this brings strong economic stimulus to both Hopkinton and the surrounding area. It brings the potential to attract more like businesses to the long vacant South Street area. It provides an increase in both near-term tax revenues and long-term tax revenues to the town. And it builds a strong economic foundation which directly affects our very positive economic, our, our very positive credit rating, which affects what we have to pay for borrowing for all those projects that we, that we fund within our town. So the Board of Selectmen is in support of this Lycan TIF because we see that it provides a very strong potential for significant economic benefits to the town at low risk. The project can bring new tax revenue and strengthen our economic base. And it is new needed activity to an industrial zone that will add positively to both the quality of life and the vitality of Hopkinton. And what happens if we hold special town meeting on Monday and we don't have a quorum? I think we need 117 people we do. to be there. What happens if we don't have 117 people? It's not going to be a long meeting. So if you're willing to come out on a cold night, we're not going to keep you there till 11 o'clock. The, this is decision time and we should, we should give them our word one way or the other now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is in the hands of town meeting, and, you know, it's, it's a gain uh, that we stand to have, and it's up to town meeting voters, so I cannot emphasize enough. Uh, emphasize enough. Um, it really is important to come to this special town meeting. Mm -hmm. It's part of your civic duty. Mm -hmm. Very good. And if I just may say, uh, there was a lot of work that went into preparing this interview by our town hall staff so that our voters got as much information as possible. A lot of time was put in by our, our uh, town assessor, John Neese and Ruth Anderson, by the town finance team, uh, Tim O'Leary, our chief uh, CFO, Ben Sweeney, our procurement officer, D um, Dave Nalkajian, our uh, chief accountant, and of course, Norman Kamalo, our town manager. So I want everyone to know, we take this very seriously and we take your being an informed voter very seriously as well. So thank you so much again. We really appreciate it on behalf of EHOP. Um, you know, this has been really helpful and we so appreciate the whole team that you just listed of all the people who were involved with pulling all of this information together. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, yeah. Nanda. Yeah. Thank you, EHOP. Yeah.